Dear students, now we are going to solve one important problem in this Natan's theorem. Before going to solve the problem, let's discuss the steps to be followed in this Natan's theorem. Natan's theorem states that any linear active network can be replaced by a single current source in parallel with the equivalent resistance. Okay. So here the steps in Natan's theorem. The first step is to find the Natan's current that is short circuit current because we are going to short the branch through which the current is to be calculated. The first step is to identify the branch and then we have to short circuit the branch then find out the short circuited current that is also known as Natan's current. The second step is to find out the equivalent resistance that is also known as Natan's resistance. For that we have to remove the load resistor of the given circuit and then inactivate all the sources in the given circuit. So here voltage sources short circuited, current sources open circuited, then we can calculate the equivalent resistance of the circuit. So that is the Natan's resistance. So after calculating the short circuited current and an equivalent resistance, we can draw the Natan's equivalent circuit. So here current source in parallel with an equivalent resistance of the circuit and then the load resistor. If you want to find out the load current through this resistor RL, then we can use current division rule. So IL is equal to the total current in the circuit IN multiplied with the opposite resistance. So according to current division rule, we can consider the opposite resistance. So the total current multiplied with the resistance RN divided by the sum of these two resistance values. Okay. Similarly, we can find out the voltage drop across this RL as VL is equal to IL into RL. Okay. Let's solve one important problem. Obtain the Natan's equivalent circuit at the terminals AB for the given circuit. So this is the given circuit for the circuit. We are going to draw the Natan's equivalent circuit. Correct. So here we are going to convert the circuit into Natan's equivalent. That means we are going to have one current source in parallel with an equivalent resistance. Okay. So at the terminals A and B. So we are going to find out this Natan's current and this equivalent resistance for the circuit. So here in the solution part, the first step is to find the short circuit current that is Natan's current. So for getting this short circuited current, first step is to short the given terminals AB. So because we are going to find out the Natan's equivalent circuits at this terminals AB. So here we are going to short circuit this branch. Okay. And then find out the current through this branch that is known as short circuited current. Here we are having two loops. Okay. Loop 1 and loop 2. So this current is considered as I2. So here I2 is nothing but short circuited current. Next we are going to find out this I2 current. For that we are going to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law to loop 1 and loop 2. So what is Kirchhoff's voltage law? That is KVL states that the sum of voltage rises is equal to the sum of voltage drops in the closed path. So here we are going to apply this KVL to this first loop. So here voltage source is nothing but the voltage rise. Okay, here voltage drops occur across this 3 ohm and 6 ohm. So now we can apply this KVL to this first loop. We can take this drops first. So voltage drop across this 3 ohm is I1 into 3 plus 6 into I1. Here this 6 ohm is having two currents. One is I1 in this forward direction. Another one is I2 in the reverse direction. 
So here we can take this I2 as well for this 6 ohm. So 3I1 plus 6I1 minus 6I2. That is the sum of voltage drops. That is equal to the sum of voltage rises in the given circuit. So here minus 2 plus we can consider plus 20. The same in this path minus 2 plus here we can consider 10 plus 10. Then the total voltage rises 30 volt. Okay. So 3I1 plus 6I1, 9I1 minus 6I2 is equal to 30. That is the first equation. Next we can apply KVL to the second loop. So here the current is I2. Then we can get the voltage drops as 6 into I2 plus 3 into I2 minus 6 into I1. That is equal to here the current is flowing in this direction, right? Here it is plus 2 minus. So we can take the voltage value as minus 10. Do you all understand this one? So here we can get the second equation as minus 6 I1 plus 9 I2 is equal to minus 10. So now we have obtained two equations 9 I1 minus 6 I2 is equal to 30 from the first loop. Minus 6 I1 plus 9 I2 is equal to minus 10 from the second loop. So we want to find out that I2 value because I2 is equal to short circuited current. Correct. So for getting this I2 we are going to cancel this I1 value. So for that we are going to solve these two equations. Okay. So here we are going to multiply this first equation by 6. So first equation is multiplied with this 6. We can get 9 6 are 54, 6 6 are 36, 6 30 are 180. Similarly, the second equation is multiplied with 9. Okay, for cancelling this I1 value. So here we can get minus 6 9 are 54. So minus 54 I1, here 9 9 are 81 plus 81 I2 is equal to minus 90. Then we can add this to equation. Then this term is getting cancelled. We can get plus 45 I2. Correct. So here 81 minus 36 is 45. That is equal to 180 minus 90 is 90. So from this we can get I2 is equal to 90 by 45. That value is 2 ampere. So here we can get I2 is equal to Short circuited current is equal to 2 ampere. That is nothing but Norton's current. Do you all understand this one? In the next step, we are going to find out the equivalent resistance of the given circuit. So that is also known as Norton's resistance. So for getting this value, we have to remove the load resistor across the given terminals. But in this problem, they haven't given any resistance across this A and B terminals. Okay. So next we are going to inactivate the source. So here voltage source is given. So in these two branches the voltage sources are short circuited. So you can see this diagram right. So there is no voltage source in the given circuit because it is short circuited. Okay. So now we have this 3 ohm in parallel with this 6 ohm. So this parallel combination, so here these two resistance are in parallel. Okay, so this parallel combination is in series with this 3 ohm resistor. So we can easily find out the equivalent resistance is equal to 3 ohm in parallel with 6 ohm, then series with 3 ohm. So we can use the parallel formula 3 into 6 by 3 plus 6 plus 3. So plus represents series connection okay then we can get the equivalent resistance is equal to 18 by 9 plus 3 then we can get the equivalent resistance value as 5 ohm do you all understand this one and the last step is to draw the Norton's equivalent circuit for the given diagram what is the value of short circuited current that is 2 ampere in parallel with Equivalent resistance is 5 ohm. So this is the final answer.
सो दिस क्वेश्चन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वन